friends of Al Bahria who are living here for a few years will know uh, more about what they do here in uh, Al Bahria Oasis. We have Anne Brun from uh, Sweden and uh, Stephanie Heine from uh, Germany. Anne and Stephanie, right? So we start with uh, Stephanie because she's been here longer. <laughs> How long have you been here? I've been here since 11 years. 11 years now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you're uh, going on. Yeah, what we do. <laughs> as soon as you have children, you can't change. You can't go anywhere. So, they grew up here. <laughs> so, so, yeah, go ahead. How did it happen? What made you stay here? Um, somehow it was accidentally. I went to the desert. First I went to Egypt. Okay, after this I liked Egypt and I want to see something different. And I went to the Sinai. After this, I went to here. And I liked the desert. And um, then I... I met my further husband, Yanni, and so it happened. And then after four years, Yanni was a long decision. It was not easy made decision to move because it's yes. absolutely a big change. No course, one can really yeah. Yeah. imagine. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I did the change and since then I'm here. Yeah. So it could have been any other place of the desert probably. So it was accidentally Baharia, so I'm here now. <laughs> so and it's so not the, bad, desert, Yanni. the desert is what attracted you? Um, or the husband, isn't it? No, 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 no. It was <laughs> oh, no, it just have the chance to say anything wrong. No. <laughs> You're cornered. <laughs> no, no, it was, first of all, it was a desert. Yeah. Because I came, I was living in a big town in Germany. And working and running all the normal business. So, yeah. and here I came and it was relaxing. And to hear quietness, not nothing, to hear quietness. Mm. To see the stars, to see the moon, to live with nature to find your inner silence somehow. Mm. And that was the desert. And I like the desert. I went because I'm, I'm lucky my husband is a very, very good driver. So I went with him and a friend from Switzerland. Every year we came two or three times. We went to all the places in the desert mm. except the gift. You're lucky and not all Egyptian men are good drivers. Mm. You're so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was really something special to, to see the desert. And for me, it was horrible when I went to the desert with my first child when he was born. And I went with him. Really? He took all my, my experience of the desert because I was busy with him. Of course. <laughs> so all this quietness and this, this re Yanni relaxing and everything, I lost it. But Yanni, later, you, you have to get used to it. You get used to children and everything. So now it's a different way I'm, I'm living in the desert. And I went with the first children. I have four now. Mm -hmm. And with them I went, but yeah, I mean now I prefer to stay at home. I like the desert, but it's here or there. You're at home where you feel at home, and it's yeah, I mean, yeah. still I go to bed. But with four children, you know, it's a little bit um, <laughs> hard job in the desert. <laughs> we'll talk more about that, but we go to Bru and Anne uh, Brun. You've been here for a couple of years, two yeah. years now. Yeah. So you're a bit later now. Yes. Yeah. What happened that brought you here? I came for a, a trip around uh, Egypt for three weeks and I went to, uh, started in Cairo and then I came here. I went to the desert for four days and then I continued down via uh, Dakhla to uh, Luxor and Aswan and Abu Simbel and did all the classical things. Mm. Uh, but by far the best was the desert. It was so amazing. And uh, I went back to Sweden and uh, looked at my life there and, and realized that there are some things that are better. I had a very fancy apartment, I had a good job, I, I had everything that you're supposed to have. Mm -hmm. But the feeling of being in the desert was, took over everything. Mm -hmm. So I had to go back. I came back a couple of times and then I, I met my husband. And uh, so I decided I'll, I'll try and live here for a while. Do you think there is a certain type of personality for the person who falls in love with the desert, or the desert, or it just happens. You never know before you do it. I don't think you can know before because it's so different from everything else. Yeah. It's it's an amazing feeling to being in the to just being in the desert. Yeah. You feel very small, and you get an enormous respect for nature. Yeah. And but it's so beautiful, yeah. and it's so peaceful, and you have all these worries and problems and everything you have. You come to the desert, it just disappears. Mm -hmm. And you just feel this peace. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very hard to describe. Mm -hmm. But I hope, I hope everyone comes at least once in a lifetime to the desert. And how long does it take to find your inner peace in the desert? 
almost immediately you get out uh, you come to a beautiful place you come with a car and you, you go outside and you just sit down in the sand and you just feel it mm. uh, it's it's so fantastic uh, what do you do here you've been here for 11 years you have a family but do you try to work in something do you try to uh, to spend your time in something else other than the family yeah, and first of all, they keep you quite busy, four uh, children. Yeah, four children. So, and yes, a big round, big garden, <laughs> and I, yeah, but anyhow, since uh, sometime, I always thought to do something. From the beginning, I thought, Yanni, the women here, we can, we can do something together. We learn from each other. But it's more difficult than I thought. Mm -hmm. I had to learn a lot from them, because I had to, to, Yanni, to arrange here. But for them, it's a little bit difficult to learn from us. Mm -hmm. So, I was a little bit frustrated for many years and yeah, I busy with the children. So now I started again and I, I try to help the uh, NGO here, the Desert Lovers, you hear about it also. I try to help them in my way. Yeah, you work a lot. Mm -hmm. You open the shop and yeah, you will hear about this later, I think. So it's, but the, the, the hardest thing is um, I have to work with the children and this keeps me busy because the education is not what I'm dreaming of. We don't have any private schools in Baharia and um, so it's for me a little bit difficult because I always see my education in Germany and I wish I, but yeah, like all the parents, they wish the best to their children and I don't have the chance here to give them the, the really best, so I have to do it at home. And this keeps me really busy. We, we do a lot of German and English. And but do you think there are other things that you're providing for them that outweigh the quality of education? Sorry? You think there are other things that uh, living here mm. provides for them that outweigh the quality of education? Or yeah, sure. Sure. For them it's really... Yeah, otherwise I would have gone, mm. you know. Um, they have things here... Yeah, I mean, children in Europe, they, they will never... They could never imagine. It's even, I mean, we have a big ground. We have animals. I come from a town, so I, I wouldn't have had the chance to, to build a big house for them, to have a ground, these animals, to... Yani, they are running around, they are growing up in the desert, they know both, they have the German tradition because inside the house it's almost German, we get up early in the morning, we sleep early in the night. Not very Egyptian. <laughs> my children are still awake now, so... <laughs> Anyhow, no, but outside it's, it's different, so they have both and it's, it's good for them, they grow from it. And I always say that our future would be a lot more children like this. They, they, they build a compromise from both, both traditional um, strings and it's the best we can have mm. because they also, they, they accept, they accept black people, they, it's normal for them, black, white, Arabic, English, German for them, everything is normal, mm. Christian, Muslims, everything really, for them it's totally normal, mm. so this is what we should need. So this is why I'm still here, to give them the chance. And they are adapting with the way of life here? Yeah, for them it's normal. And they That's have how they from time up. to time, yeah. For them, sometimes they can go to, to Germany, but not very often, it's quite expensive. What happens when they go to the very busy areas, countries or cities? Do they feel detached from it? They just Do they like to go it? To Cairo. They go to Cairo? No, now? it's not, yeah, just for them it's not a big difference, just mm. it's cleaner in Germany, so it's, and it's colder sometimes, but for them big cities, Germany or, or Cairo, it doesn't matter. We go quite often because we need to go to most of the doctors we have in Cairo and mm. everything. So, mm. and sometimes some shopping. Mm. But yes, yeah. shopping is important. <laughs> yeah, it's improving here in Baharia, but still... So I think you have missing. wonderful outfits. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> we don't wear it normally. <laughs> I can imagine. You can export it to sell it. <laughs> we sell it in our NGO shop, anyhow. Yes, yeah. <laughs> We were talking earlier about the things that you learned from the women of Bahareya and things that you think they should learn from you. Tell us about the things that you learned and the things that you think they should know. Very simple, I learned from them cooking. Because <laughs> the Egyptian, Egyptian man, yeah, my, my husband is a little bit better, uh, but most of the Egyptian men, they just want to eat what they know. So I had to learn cooking from them, the way they do it. And yeah, we are used to a different way of cooking. We, we cook internationally and they just cook their... Egyptian way. Okay, so this is just the easy, easy thing. The other way around, you take the example, um, I try to explain them to them that their way of cooking, it's not that healthy. <laughs> Our way, it's a little bit more healthier with the vitamins and everything. And they asked me, for example, when my first son was, well, my son was, uh, after six months, we stopped breastfeeding in Germany, so in uh, Europe. 
And here you continue. So we talk about this. And I tried to explain to them he needs iron and he needs vitamin from outside. And I told them, give, give him maybe potatoes and carrots, like I grew up with it. And then they told me, they have to eat rice, they have to eat bread. Yeah, but there was also other things. So it was difficult. They stick to their tradition somehow. It's a long way. <laughs> okay, Anna, and what about you? Are you adopt did you adopt easily in the two years you have uh, been here? Or you feel you still need some time? Things are not there. No, I, I still think I need time. Uh, I mean, it, it takes it takes a while to uh, get to know traditions and, and customs here and uh, I did some mistakes in the beginning um, I'm learning uh, but I, I would say that I'm, I'm I've adapted and I'm accepted um, but I don't think that I will ever be living like the women do here mm -hmm. you love cook the cooking they do here <laughs> I, sometimes I do but I, I do a lot of other types of cooking mm -hmm. and uh, I uh, I'm still a European woman, even though I'm living here. Mm. So um, it's a mix. Yeah. It's a mix. And you, you also work. Uh, I know your your husband is uh, a tour in, in the safaris. So yeah, and we have a hotel. Have own, uh, work. Do you spend your time working on that, or you have? I, I take care of the hotel quite a lot, and I take care of the bookings. We get a lot of emails. Mm. Uh, most of the bookings are via emails, mm. so I take care of that and. Uh, there's a lot of things to arrange as well. People need to be picked up in Cairo or at the, at the airport or at hotels and that needs to be arranged and uh, people have a lot of questions. Um, what are the most questions that you get? Sorry. Yeah. What are the most questions? Well, people who have never been to the desert yeah. are, are, you know, they, they have no idea what to expect. Um, many, many people from Europe know that the nights, for example, in the desert can be cold. Um, but I always have to stress that if they come in, you know, November, December, January, it's really cold. It can even be fro freezing at night. Mm -hmm. And even though I stress this every time, people always have too few things with them to cover up at night. But they, they ask about a lot of things. Um, uh, what they can eat, what they cannot eat, how they should be dressed, um, what they should bring. Um, often I... I I tell them to also, if they have spare clothes, for example, they bring that and I can give them to uh, families who have not so much. Mm. So I have a suitcase in the house and whenever there's a family with children coming, I try to find something to give to them. That's very interesting. Mm. So what do you think are the means um, that should be done to promote tourism here in Bahrain? Uh, uh, we need to, first of all, people in Cairo have no idea that this place exists. Mm -hmm. Many people, if I say that, when I'm in Cairo, I say I live in Bahariya, they say, huh? Mm -hmm. And I have to explain. Yes. And I, since, as long as the Egyptians don't know about Bahariya, it's very hard to get mm -hmm. people from outside to, to, to know where it is. I mean, if, if they walk into a... a, a, a an office in Cairo and wants to go for a trip in Egypt and they don't know that, that this place exists. Mm. It's a bit hard. Mm. But I think that actually people from abroad know more about Bahariya than the Egyptians. Mm. It's very famous, especially among Europeans. Yes. Why do you think that? Many Europeans come here. Why do you think this is the case? People have been coming here for maybe 30 years. Mm. And uh, there hasn't been a specific, uh, you know, um, no advertisement for Bahariya, but the word is just spread.